All right, so, hey, hello again. It's been a minute. Let me turn that off. This is distracting. So I have been cutting gears for just as about as long as I can remember. Ooh, pretty gears. Lots of gears. Big gears, little gears. Cutting gears. And I'm getting close to being done. I've got about two or three more to cut and then I'll be done cutting all the parts um, it has been a bit delayed not because of the clock or the design or anything like that just uh, you know seasons and uh, kids and stuff like that so I uh, I'm totally convinced that I could have this whole thing done in three weeks if I worked on it consistently every day and that just hasn't happened mostly my fault oh but before I finish cutting all of the gears I wanted to take a minute to document what I'm doing so I can look back on it years from now when the clock has been running regularly and reliably for years I can look back and say oh yeah I remember the trial and tribulation of designing and cutting and building this thing because that's where the fun is that's where the pride is when you put something together and it works yeah that's that's a good feeling and it does it wears off over time as you look at it you know um oh, what's the words hard um, familiarity breeds contempt so I look at the first clock that I made which is still running that's the Revit medieval paper clock cardboard one great clock a lot of fun didn't take very long to build that one's working great the second one the Revit peace tower clock that was a chore it was a punishment and it doesn't work worth a damn um, now the parts that I built were great the wooden escapement and the alternate gears, they're a charm. They're perfect. But the cardboard frame of the paper frame of the clock just does not support the weight that I need it to to operate the way I want. So if I'm willing to like make a new frame out of wood, you know, maybe they have a different result. But we're not here to talk about the Rebbit. Peace Tower Paper Clock. We're here to talk about my Petros. That's a stupid name. I need a better name. Help me out with the name. I'm thinking Petros, like petrified time. Petro. Petrification. Kronos. Petros. Huh? No, it, it's stupid. Yeah. I need help with the name. Uh, a wooden clock of my own design. Lots of roundness. Round. No sharp angles. Lots of round. Like, here's the frame. Here's a frame. Kind of looks like a, almost like a Hobbit window from Lord of the Rings or from freaking, where do they live? The Shire. It looks like a window in the side of a Hobbit hill in the Shire. Something like that. I don't know. I, I need a, I need a good name for a nice round wooden clock of my own design. Please help. Please. Uh, if, if you name it well and I like it, I will send you a set of the plants for free. Okay? Go! Why? There's something else I want to talk about. Sorry, I have. When I sat down, was working on this. I was like, man, I really need a beer. Go downstairs. There's no beer. Okay, how about a mixed drink? No mixed drink. All right, fine. Wine, wine, wine's fine. Uh, no wine. What have we got left? The only drink in the house. Sake. <laughs> so I've had a little much. But don't worry, it'll come to me. So, uh, cut out the pieces, cut out the gears, then polishing. I've got a Dremel tool. I've got two bits. I've got a tiny little one here to get in between the teeth. And then I've got a slightly larger one. This looks to be about maybe a quarter inch, maybe three eighths. It's a little bit of um, sandpaper wrapped around the drill head there. So, it's not... I got a really cheap set. I got a nine dollar set. A nine dollar this and all the attachments, nine bucks from Harbor Freight. Hazard fraud, as some call it. Uh 
problem with that is they wear out really fast, and I end up buying a whole new one for each clock. So I think this is my third or fourth Dremel, actually. But it's working, and I'm rounding the teeth carefully, going over the hard edges. So what did I want to talk about with that that I thought was worth documenting? I don't know if this is going to turn out very well, because in the Petrus clock, in the Revit Peace Tower clock, I made a few custom gears out of wood, whereas the rest of the clock is made of paper. And those gears worked out fine. The problem with them wasn't that the teeth didn't mesh. That was not the problem. The problem was that I didn't get the gear on straight on the axle. So it would wobble as it turned. Does that make sense? The gear would wobble, and every once in a while, like once or twice a day, the teeth would slide behind the others. Uh, and that's not the gear's fault, and it's not the axle's fault. It's this friggin' paper frame that just sags and warps, and it just doesn't hold things rigid like it should. So, also, I think the design isn't very good. The way the place that they put the weight pulley where the string unwinds from is not in a very good location because if you use everything the way the instructions said to put it together, it bumps against the pendulum. Then again, the, the stock clock only runs for like 45 minutes. It's just a. I'm not here to talk about the Peace Tower Clock, which is just a party piece, honestly. It's just a conversation starter. It's not like a regular, everyday in, day out clock, like a nice wristwatch or something. Uh, no, I'm talking about this wooden clock today. What do I want to talk about? Okay, so, the steps for this, because these videos are the manual. If you somehow get a hold of the plans that I made for this and want to make your own, I'm not going to make a manual. This is the manual. So to start from the beginning, in broad steps, you get the plans, huge roll of paper, we're talking like 19 feet by 3 feet, with all the parts printed out on them, you cut those parts out and glue them onto wood. Okay, glue them onto wood, drill out the holes first, well I mean cut, cut out the broad sections with a jigsaw, then cut out the holes. Uh, when you cut the holes, you want to have a scrap piece of wood underneath. Otherwise, you get what I call hole blowout. A big, ugly chunk of wood coming out of the back side. You don't want that on either side, and it's effort to sand it back down. So, keep a spare hunk of wood around that you can put underneath when you use your drill press. you got to use some kind of drill press or something. Don't do them all by hand because... The holes need to be perfectly perpendicular so that you can just stick the axle in, glue it, and be done with it. You don't have to worry about trying to line it up and ream it out and put it on the lathe and all that bullshit. You don't want to do that. So, use a drill press. I got one for like 60 bucks from Harbor Freight, and it's, it's working, except for when it isn't. Got a problem here. This is the biggest gear on the clock. Uh, this one and the next largest gear have the same problem, which is... Sorry, I don't want to make it puke. I don't know if you can see. When that gear is all the way back against the back of the drill press... Okay, drill press comes down here. Come on, focus. There we go. Drill press comes down here. The middle is here. So the gear physically will not fit against the back of the drill press far enough to get to the middle hole. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do about that yet. Honestly, I think at the end of the day, I'm going to have to take the whole drill press apart. Like, maybe take the top off of it. Can I take the top off of it? Looks like there's just a set screw. Maybe if I can take the top off the post, 
put the gear on the post. Let me, here's it easier to visualize the one with all the triangles cut out. Put the gear on the post, put the top back on the drill press, drill it once, take it all back apart again, take the gear off. I think that's going to have to be the way to go. Um, I have to do something similar just to cut out these triangles with the scroll saw. It's got a... Um, Oh, it's got an adjustment knob in the back that you loosen it, and it loosens this blade. Okay, enough that the blade physically, oh, I can just show you. Loosen. So I turn this knob in the very back. It loosens the blade. The blade comes loose. Hold on to it so it doesn't fall through. Boom, look at that. Blade disconnected. So then you take your gear... I have drilled half inch holes just roughly in the middle and you can fit the gear on top of the blade, huh? <laughs> Clever. Yeah. Put the blade back together, tighten it up. It takes a little bit, but in the grand scheme of things, that's not that bad. Nice and tight. Oh, a nice straight line. It nice and tight. Okay, so then uh, then I could just and cut it, cut that piece out, take the blade back apart, take the gear off, good to go. Sanding it. Okay, so you cut all your pieces out, you cut all your teeth out, you drill all your holes, and you end up with a gear that has paper on one side, wood on the other. Now, if you want, you can leave the paper. Most gears, doesn't matter which side is the front. It doesn't. Uh, there are a few that it do. Namely, the escape wheel and the ratcheting wheel for the motor. Those two are polarity sensitive. So for those two gears, I have reversed them on the paper such that if I was too lazy to sand the paper off, I could leave them and the paper would be on the back side of the gear. You probably never see it. However, with this being my first clock, uh, and who knows how many more of these I'm going to make, I intend to sand everything. Front, back, side to side, I'm going to sand it all. That's what the Dremel's for. I'm going to sand it all, do the best I can, because I want to give myself the best possible chance of success. Because here's the problem I was talking about with the familiarity breeds contempt and having the old clocks and the new clock and blah, blah, blah. And we're back to the Peace Tower Clock. The Peace Tower Clock doesn't work. And that's one of the reasons that this one's taking me so long. It's because I'm discouraged. I'm discouraged by the Peace Tower Clock. It's hanging in my bedroom. It's not running. Every time I go in my bedroom, I feel this... <sighs> when I look at the thing, and it's not working. And at best, I can get it to run for two or three hours. And as much effort as I put into that... It's too much. I'm too personally invested in it to just throw it away or burn it. But on the other hand, I've already put so much into it, I don't want to invest any more time in something that I have no promise is ever going to work properly. So I'm kind of stuck in this demotivating limbo with that clock. And that's one of the reasons that I'm having made as much progress on this as I really want to, honestly. I should move it. I should go put it in the garage or something so I don't have to look at it, because that's not the only failed clock I have. We've also got, don't forget, this guy, the Rudolph paper clock. It comes in a book, and you literally cut the book apart to build the clock. Um... That was the first one I tried to build as an adult. And I didn't have the skills, time, patience, or tools to do it. I bet if I did it again, that clock would work. It's an interesting clock because it runs on like beads, paper clips, and rubber bands. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'll revisit it someday. But today is not that day. Today we we're working on a custom designed, handmade wooden clock. Okay, so I was going through the steps. This is supposed to serve, 
This weird stream of consciousness BS that I'm spewing is supposed to serve as the manual. So step one is get the paper, cut the paper out, glue the paper to the wood. Uh, step two is cut out the wood, cut out all the parts. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a couple parts and finish them at a time, like do all the gears, do all the frames, do all the other et cetera components. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to do everything at once because there's so many different tools involved with each step of the process that it makes sense to just cut everything while I got the cutting tools out, sand everything while I got the sanding tools out, and so on and so forth. So the next step for me, obviously, is to finish the sanding. And I want to do two rounds of sanding, a coarse sand and a fine polish, with a round of sealing and lacquering in between. So step 4A is rough sand. Step 4B is seal sealing it with sanding sealer. Sorry, my jar's out in the garage. Step 4C is lacquer. Am I lacquer? Lacquer's also out in the garage. Ah. Step 4D is polish or fine sanding. And for that, what I'll probably end up doing is if you can see this bit has a coarse section on the end and just polished metal in the middle. That's what I did with the paper clock was I just used this metal part, this polished metal part in the middle of the bit to go over and give it a nice, smooth, flat, slick surface because I want to reduce, that's not coming off, I want to reduce ugh, the amount of friction between the gears as they turn. Make it a sense? So, uh, step four is sanding and polishing. Step five will be the fun part, assembly. I have no idea what that's going to look like yet, uh, other than this is a piece of the frame. It has been rough sanded, it has been sealed, it has not been lacquered or polished. Okay? Don't know if I need to, but just looking at these, the sanding sealer kind of feels very coarse on its own, and I don't like that. I want the frame to look nice, because there's going to be so much of it. You've got the moving parts of the clock, which are going to be constantly in motion, so you're not going to be able to really see the fine details other than, hey, wow, look, the thing's moving. Ooh. The frame itself is stationary, and as a stark contrast to the moving mechanisms inside, you will be able to see all of the fine detail, the wood grain, the polish, etc., on the frame. Maybe I need to take some extra effort to make the frame look good, even if I don't apply that final polish to the flat surfaces of the gears. Let me know what you think in the comments. So assembly is step five. Step six will be troubleshooting and diagnostics. Step seven will be revision. 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 I gotta go back to my drawings, back to my plans, apply any changes that I made along the way, and once that's done, you will find the link to my revised plans underneath every single video in this series, okay? I commit to you that I will put those there. Now, if you scroll down right now and don't see it, it's because I'm not done yet. So be patient. Give me, let's see, at the course, uh, how I'm doing this, and the rate of, uh, give me 60 years. No, seriously, I want to have this done by like January. 2020 hopefully so yeah well, please wish me luck I need it this clock is a project and it I keep telling myself yeah it's gonna work perfect I mean why wouldn't it I know what the hell I'm doing but I don't I don't have ever done this before and it's I, I, initial bucket list was just finish the cardboard clock and here I am designing a new one from scratch I mean, Isaac Newton would have given his eye teeth to have a mechanical clock so he could time his experiments. And I'm nowhere near as smart as him. And here I am trying to build one. So, 
let's hope it's just a difference of the tools we had available at the time and not necessarily how smart we are. Is that 20 minutes? Holy shit, I've been talking for 20 minutes? Go do something more fun than watch me.